What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxana. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello, everybody. What is going on? It is Jay Campbell. And of course, you are here in the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual now StreamYard, no longer Zoom studio with Elise Breeze. Elise, how are you? I am great. Thanks so much for having me. It's amazing to have you. Uh, let me give you um, give the audience who is not familiar with her uh, you know, a little bit about your background and your bio. She is the CEO of Elise Breeze and has been teaching and practicing breath work for 20 years. And it absolutely incorporates her unique style of breath work channeled in the Akashic Records. Woohoo! <laughs> create rapid momentum with all of her clients. In doing so, she uses her powerful connection to spirit to tap into people's energy so she can help identify what's holding them back. She helps them overcome these blocks through breath work, the Akashic Records, and powerful energy healing. Her mission on this planet is to guide people to activate their ascension, live their soul's mission, and step into the fifth dimension of awareness, which is amazing. You are at the right place. Uh, so before <laughs> before we start the show, let, let, let both of us set the intention that this is going to be a magnificent podcast. It's amazing to have you. Uh, as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, we have some amazing bullet points. But why don't why don't you just get your I get your feedback on what is going on right now in the third dimension? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, sometimes I get overwhelmed by the third dimension. <laughs> right. There's a lot of things where you know once you start running your own business and you're on this path of personal growth, you kind of realize like how your brain works and how it's not always functioning that well to do very like mundane tasks or even um, oh, yeah. writing content or my, my brain tends to see things very much on the meta level and I can tune into energy very well and I can read energy very well. But then when it comes sometimes to bringing it down into like the physical reality, sometimes it's overwhelming. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at today. That's awesome. And, uh, and, and I would agree. I mean, you know, I tell people and I know you, you we're, we're very similar people and on some more paths, but, uh, it's where you place your consciousness, right? Like yeah. if you get focused on the duality and the insanity, right. Of what is going on out there with, you know, the V and the masking and, you know, again, all of that, that fear consciousness vibration, um, you can get pulled into it really fast. You know, obviously I'm always referring to Dr. Hawkins's map of consciousness to calibrate for people, to make it simple so that they have, you know, some sort of like understanding and awareness. And I'm like, you could be here, right. At this 400, 500 level of like love, reason, reverence, and understanding and instantly get pulled, you know, down here in a, in a minute when you're, you know, in a crowd of people who are literally, you know, with six masks on. <laughs> you know, yes. pulling, you, pulling you in. So it's like, it, you know, the master walking this planet right now is able to stay here and not react to 
what is going on around them, as you said, in the third dimension, right? So it's like you can keep your consciousness in the fifth dimension for a majority of your day. But as you know, and you're obviously in Philly and I'm, you know, right outside of two major cities. If you go into the city, <laughs> all bets are off. You know, you walk into a Whole Foods or a Sprouts. <laughs> Yeah, or something like that, you know, and you're not wearing a mask or whatever. And, you know, your people sort of looking at you, you know, so if you engage in that energy, you can get pulled out really quick. So, I mean, it does, oh, yeah. it, it does require people um, to, you know, again, keep that consciousness elevated. Um, so you're a master. I know that from your talking point. So I want to get into that. And actually, um, well, why don't you know, the first talking point is obviously how you change your life, right? But yeah, I'm just tell your story because when I hear Akashic records, I mean, like that's the jam, right? Like I, <laughs> as I told you off air, I've had my Akashic records for the last four years. My wife and I do it twice a year, religiously. Uh, mm -hmm. My reading in uh, January of 2020, Elise, was so unbelievable that every single thing that was predicted for me has come true. There were four major events in my life, and one of them was that you would be moving to the wine country. And I laughed and I said, I'm not moving to Northern California if my life depended on, right? <laughs> Here we are. We ended up moving down into Marietta Temecula, which is wine country in the area that I never even knew was wine country. So anyway, I'm, I'm fascinated to hear about the Akashic and how you got involved in that. Yeah. So it's interesting. I So when I first went into my Akashic Records, which was not actually that long ago. It was only last summer that I was introduced to the Akashic Records and um, and I did a training to enter my records. But what I realized when I went into my records for the first time, well, first of all, I had such a powerful experience. I was like hysterical crying, yeah, this yeah. like amazing feeling of like unconditional love that I've never felt before. But then I had this very acute awareness that I've always been in the Akashic Records. Like right. I've always had access to it. And I have this joke with one of my clients who's very similar. And we say that we use the Akashic Records to get through college because <laughs> I literally like never read a book, but somehow I figured out like what to write or what to say. <laughs> and I feel like it was because I was just able to tune into the energy. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what the records are. It's a frequency of information. And all you need to do is to tune into that frequency, similar to tuning into a radio station. And then you have access to that information. And I just am someone that naturally is able to tune into that frequency. So even though I was just introduced to the Akashic Records and knowing like the name of it last year, I've always been tuned into it. So it's kind of been a lifelong thing for me. Yeah. I mean, and that's beautiful. And, and truthfully, you know, when you say that, it's just, you just woke up to it, right? But I mean, there's been obviously who knows how many lives when you've been working with it. You know, I have a good friend right. myself who, after he did his reading last year, after I did my reading, he was told that he was a record keeper mm -hmm. and, and not kit. And, and, you know, it, it was like, thing because the guy's like one of the most prolific copywriters on planet earth. Right. And so it's mm -hmm. like, you also can access all of that energy and all that frequency whenever you want. Like you said, when you can energetically align. Um, so with that, so obviously, yes, you are probably a record keeper too, or been, have yes. been working with the records in so many lifetimes. That's, that's amazing. Okay. So tell us your story about, you know, healing and changing your life. Through yeah. So I've always been, like I said, tune into something. I've always been a seeker, even as a young child, mm -hmm. I, had a lot of experiences where I was seeing things that other people weren't seeing. I was tuned into things that other people weren't tuned into. I was like experiencing my soul and having all of these out of body experiences, which I never told anyone about because I was scared sure. um, of what I was experiencing. And I also could feel on an energetic level that my parents like wouldn't be able to hold space for that. So sure. I just never said anything about it. And it was something I kind of like pushed down. And also it scared me. Like I would mm -hmm. see visions and it just scared me because yeah. I was a kid and I didn't know what was going on. And then, um, you know, I kind of pushed that stuff down and um, 
grew up and into my teenage years was just was just always like super rebellious, like always um, really adventurous, wanted to try anything, never wanted to follow the rules. And I was always like looking for answers, like what's really going on here? Like this world that we see is not just like, this is not just it, right? Like I was always looking for more. I was always into like astrology and psychics and witches and all of that stuff. And then um, when I was 19, I was like just ending my first year of college and I was kind of in a bad place. Like I just was, it was kind of like, well, what do I do? Just go to college and get a job. Like this is bullshit. Like I don't want to do this, you know, like what is this? And I was um, having a lot of anxiety. I was suffering with an eating disorder. And I was just kind of like, why am I feeling this way? You know, like I didn't have any sort of bad thing happen to me as a kid. I had like a pretty like quote unquote normal upbringing, which obviously now that I know a lot more about trauma, I understand that it wasn't. But at the time, you know, you don't realize that you have stuff to heal until you realize you have stuff to heal. So um, I was looking for answers. So I start, I first, I found yoga and I started working at a yoga studio. And then shortly after that, I was introduced to breath work. And for some reason, I was just extremely drawn to breath work. I always describe it as like, it was kind of what I was looking for when I was having psychedelic experiences, like doing mushrooms and acid and all that stuff. Like I was looking for mind expansion and I was looking to like, see what was really going on and breath work like took me there. So I was super drawn to breath work. I studied it for the next four years very intensively. Um, I did all of these breath worker training programs. I did a teacher training program and I just completely shifted my life through breath work. I healed myself and I really started to look at like my family patterns and dynamics and understand why I did the things I did and what motivated me. And I started teaching it and sharing it. You know, I was just in my early twenties at this time. That's amazing. I mean, that's amazing that you were connected to this energy and frequency that early. So my story is very similar. Like I said, we're, so I like to say that all of us seekers who've completely consciously shifted and are now about serving the world at our highest and best capacity are the children of the light. Yes. And I read a book when I went to Peru in 2019, which again, there's no, there's no coincidences. There's only synchronicities. I was at yeah. the base of Machu Picchu and we were waiting for the bus to load up everybody that we went. And I had private, uh, I had hired private uh, indigenous guides, right? But you still got to take the bus, right? Everybody's got to yeah. go up with the bus. <laughs> so um, we were waiting and I was drawn into this bookstore. I mean, literally I was drawn into this bookstore. Mm-hmm. And it was this, it was, it was a dark, damp bookstore. Anybody who's been in Machu Picchu knows the one I'm talking about. But this thing was like lit up and it was Return of the, of the Light. Yeah. So I pulled it out, Inking in Mayan Prophecies for a New World. It's by Judith Bluestone Pollock, who's probably a pseudonym. Mm-hmm. But this book, as I read it, I read it going, I mean, it was, you know, it's not a long book, right? It's 140 with the with the old glossary, it's 136 pages. Mm-hmm. So I read the entire thing, like standing there in the bus, getting up to the bus, because, you know, the bus is 45 minutes going up. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I mean, I I definitely went through it, sped read it, and looked through the most important things. And then I read it for the rest of my trip, but I am not kidding you, Elise. It transformed me. There was so much. I mean, you can see, I mean, I highlighted so much of this book. But this book completely, and I was, by the way, 47. Mm -hmm. I just turned 50. So I, well, actually I just turned 48, but I was just turning 48 when that happened. But uh, like you, I've always been a seeker or had always been a seeker, but I wasn't ready to come out, come out of the closet. Right. So I (laughs) literally, you know, after doing the sacred Valley of Peru and reading that book, and I've always been reading books like that, but that book really lit me up It fired up all my chakras. I came back from that experience. We, you know, we even did a ceremony on Lake Titicaca and all of us, or four of us, there was my wife and I, and then another couple, the lake spoke to us. Mm. So when you said you cried, so, so did all of us. It was a un- massive outpouring of unconditional love. You know, people ask me all the time, and I'm very open about this. I'm a very advanced user of plant medicine, but this was not a plant medicine experience. This was literally an indigenous guide, the Tiawakan, um, and us four on the lake making a ceremony. And literally we were 
I mean, I can't, you know, you have to experience it, right? Like when you felt yeah. that breath work, that unconditional love and that crying and that catharsis release. So I felt the same thing. And when I came back, got on the plane and I looked at my wife and my, you know, uh, other couple who's the sales director of our real estate company. I was like, that's it. The Jay Campbell guy, who's this hormone guy, who's wrote all these books. <laughs> I'm dead. That guy's dead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be this guy. And they literally thought I was insane, right? <laughs> and so did my crew and my team and everybody that advises me and works with me and all the consultants and stuff. I mean, I had a website that was getting like 20,000 unique visitors a month and it was the number one mm -hmm. site in the world for testosterone optimization. And they're like, what? Wow. Right? So I, I, I did this. Mm -hmm. I came back and this was August of 2019. It was the end of July. I launched a book right when I came back, which was this book, Living a Fully Optimized Life, which by the way, had two chapters a lot from this, you know, on, mm -hmm. on uh, inner work and mindfulness. Um, and then that's, you know, the rest is history. I'm talking to people like you now, right? Yeah. I like, completely molecularly altered my existence. I had a second or third, this is probably my third incarnation. I've had people that tell me, no, each wife was an incarnation. Right? <laughs> like, this is now like who I am. And yeah. I'm just like you. And so that's why I say we're children of the light because now our mission is to how can we help and obviously, you know, I want to get, and I will, because something on your website, like I said, really changed me when I was reading it yesterday. But like, you know, how do we help other people like us push this energy and frequency into the universe? Because as you know, I'm not speaking to the choir here, it's about all of us getting up to here. I'm not all of us, but enough of us getting up to here so that we can then lift the boats for everybody yeah. else in the harbor to end yeah. this nonsense, right? To get yeah. off the of duality. So, I mean, you know, kind of your thoughts on that. I mean, do you feel that there are just all of us now are aligning in this way? Like you're on my podcast now, you know, you're on podcasts with other people like us. I mean, do you think that it, that's what's happening right now in the universe? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think there's those of us that are called to this work. And I know that for me, I have a very close relationship with my guides. And when I connected with them, the very first time I really connected with them, they told me that I came to this planet to raise the frequency of the planet. Beautiful. So I take that very seriously because I know very deeply that that's what I'm here to do. So um, for me, I think there's two things. I think there's two parts to this, right? So I think there's this way that people like you and I are like, we're able to be the model for what's possible, right? So people can look to us and say, wow, like Beautiful. I can live in this different way, right? Like it's possible for me to live and interact with the world in a completely different way. So there's that piece of it. But then the other piece of it that I know, and this is like what my gift is, um, is to clear trauma. Because there's no way that we can get to that higher frequency without clearing the trauma. And the two things go hand in hand, right? So I teach two courses one is around just how to awaken your psychic abilities. And the other one is around clearing ancestral and familial trauma and stepping into your gifts. And they go very closely together. So the people who come in because they really just want to connect deeper with their intuition, they want to awaken their psychic abilities, they end up facing their trauma, right? Because you can't awaken that stuff unless you face the darker parts of yourself. It's a natural process. And then the same thing, the people who come to me to clear their trauma, they end up awakening their abilities and awakening to their natural gifts and downloading their own forms of healing medicine because they've cleared out that lower vibrational frequency energy from their bodies. So um, there's th that's kind of how I describe it is what's happening right now. And for me, one of the things that I'm really able to do for people is I'm just able to see where you're holding that lower energy in your body, where you're stuck, and I can help you clear it really quickly. And that's what I, I know that we need on this planet because we're holding trauma from lifetimes of you know, a lot of shit that's gone on. So, um, and whether we're holding it from our families or down the ancestral line, um, it doesn't really matter. But um, what matters is us being able to, A, just recognize that it's something that needs to be done. And then B, having the willingness to do it. 
Um, and it's not something that can be skipped over. And I think a lot of people just want to skip to the good, like spiritual stuff without facing that shadow aspect. And, um, you can try to do that, but that stuff is always just going to come back knocking at your door, um, until you deal with it. So at least you're an amazing human being. I mean, I'm <laughs> hearing a lot of things and, you know, sensing your energy and, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff we may be doing together. I, I'm getting already a sense of that. Um, I mean, I have a lot of things, you know, you gave me amazing talking points, but we can go so many different directions. So I've been saying the same thing for three years about clearing your trauma. I just left a post on Instagram on a very, very world famous doctor. who's a friend of mine, actually. Because mm -hmm. I go after the allopathic people now. I'm like, look, man. Allopathic medicine served a purpose, but we're past that now. You know, all these people with mental health disorders and autoimmune disorders, it's nothing more than a traumatized soul, aka an amputated spirit. Mm -hmm. And until that person is, you know, obviously accepting and allowing and rec of the recognition that that's what they're dealing with. You know, you right. said it perfectly, you know the ancestral trauma, the individual trauma. I mean, so many people right now are holding the trauma for literally thousands of people in their families. Yes. It's incredible. And, you know, like, like I said, you say all the right things. We, we're very in tuned and attuned to mm -hmm. each other's energy right now. But like, th that's it. You, you know, you nailed it. I mean, there is nothing more important than healing the soul and collective trauma Yes. Of this planetary body, because as you know, we're all unified at a soul level. Yeah, exactly. And there is a collective trauma too that we're all tuned into, you know. And um, you're right. I love what you said about medicine and stuff like that, because what we're really moving into is understanding that it's all energy. Yes. Right. Like <laughs> it can all be healed on an energetic level. And when we can get to the core energetics behind that symptom that you're feeling or right. the like diagnosis of like anxiety or whatever it is like that's what's going to heal it um it's not like these things that just like look at the symptoms you right. know and i think right. that's what the the paradigm shift that we have to move out of is thinking that like these things are all not related right. and and what we're seeing on a collective level right now is we're being faced with this right like we're being shown like okay are you going to say yes to this timeline of there's this big bad thing out there and it's going to get you and it doesn't matter what you do Right? right. Or are you going to say, no, actually, I have sovereignty over my own body. I know that I create my own health. So there's nothing outside of me that's going to hurt me unless I invite it. Sovereign, so, empowered and free. That's my statement. That's so I beautiful. love that. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, let, well, let's go deeper because you're the person to do this with. And I don't really get a lot of people at your level on my show, um, which I'm tempting to, to change. But, you know, I want to go back to what you just said, because. I'm going to lose people, but that's fine. You know, if you, <laughs> if you, if you don't understand, that's fine. There's a lot of work to do, you know, continue to research and, you know, go within to go beyond. Right. But, um, we're this, so Elise and Jay, as these physical avatar beings are completely imagined, we are nothing more than worrying electrons and, you know, electronic or electron molecules, standing <laughs> waves, right. And we're vibrating. And because we're in this low, you know, frequency of the third dimension, you know, we're very dense, right? Like even this table that I'm, my computer's on that we're talking right now doesn't even exist. This is literally a coalesced mm -hmm. number of vibrating atoms and, you know, molecular particles and standing waves because of the frequency. And when we get to that point that these physical avatar bodies are just vessels for our spirits, which you were saying is energy, right? Because mm -hmm. our spirit is energy. Yes. Like we will know exactly what you just said, which is physical disease is literally just a manifestation of trapped energy. Yeah. So, so nothing that any of us can get cancer, heart disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative disorders, all the things that I've a master of speaking about, you know, are really from cellular inflammation due to trauma. Yes. It's trapped. And so it's like, okay, now I know, again, we just lost a lot of people. And, you know, most people are like, bro, can you say that again? But, I mean, I want to get your comment on that. Like, 
Did I miss anything? Yeah. No, no, I think you're right. But I think it's hard for people to wrap their head around this because of the programming that we have, right? <laughs> that like, that there's like your body is somehow separate or these things are just somehow randomly happening to you. And, um, you know, it, it's hard for people to wrap their head around in a certain way. I mean, even with myself, right? I know this and I embody this wisdom, I feel on a deep level, but like there's still a part of me that like will go back to programming at times. Like last week I had a cold and like my programming will first be like, oh, well let me like go take this thing or whatever until I tune into it on an energetic level. And I'm like, oh, I'm up leveling. Oh, I needed to rest because I just literally up leveled my business and brought in way more income this month. And my right. body is readjusting and my body's in a little bit of overwhelm. Right. So like I, I, even for me, who's tuned into it, there's a collective program that's going on that like holds a frequency and holds like a consciousness that like we have to get ourselves out of. Right. So like, it's not always easy and it can be overwhelming at times, especially when there's all of this information coming at us, that's purposely meant to distract and confuse us. So we have to literally like distract, like not distract. We have to get ourselves out of that mm -hmm. and then recenter and remember who we really are. And it's not easy. Right. And like, that's why we have tools and support and people to help us. But, um, the cars are stacked against us in some way, you know, so, let me give you something <laughs> to add to what you just said. So this morning, my wife and I just returned from Cabo San Lucas on Monday night. Right. And it was an amazing trip. You know, but you're still dealing with the drama at the airport and all, you know, I don't have to speak it. I don't want to, I don't even like speaking the words into existence, but mm -hmm. she um, has since coming back, you know, she felt like she got something in her throat and, and neither of us, you know, we, we're, we don't go to doctors, right? Like, and we're both yeah. spiritual, spiritually advanced. So I literally told her this morning, she was like, you know, my throat is still, I'm like, bro, you're a master. It doesn't even exist. Okay. <laughs> Take your energy from there and your consciousness placement there and just say, I'm perfectly healthy, whole and complete and go about your day. Right. And she looked at me and laughed and she goes, I love you, you know, or I thank you. Right. And an hour later we were at the gym training and she was fine. Mm -hmm. So it's like, but, but to your point, yes, we're still in the third dimension. We still have an ego. The mm -hmm. ego is programmed to keep us in survival programming. You're, you know, running a business, bringing in all this money. I'm scaling a business. I mean, I'm literally at four o'clock in the afternoon on most days, just being like, oh. <laughs> so it's like, but again, it's where you place your consciousness. You know, are you going to place your consciousness in a space of less than, or I'm grateful? Yeah. I'm fully surrendered, right? I mean, but you're right. It's not easy. It's still a balance. You're constantly tuning in and tuning out to keep your consciousness at, you know, this level. And you have to, you know, you know, yeah, you know, it's just the game. <laughs> yeah, you have to dodge bullets sometimes for sure. And I found myself even like just especially in the last few months, like really having to hold my energy in a way that I've never had to before and have conversations that are really uncomfortable about my choices with people who are questioning me. Um, and, you know, in I've really, it, but what it is, is it's almost like this amazing, like training in a sense, because I'm learning how to like manage and hold my own energy and hold my own frequency in a completely new way. Because, you know, what I really want to say about this too, is part of this program is to tell us that, um, someone outside of us knows better, right? Like the authority is outside of you. And what we're really understanding and reclaiming now is this idea of sovereignty, like you were saying, and, yep. and our own inner authority. So yep. really realizing and embodying on a deep level that there's no one outside of you who knows better than you do about right. what you need to do That's and exactly really right. taking your power back in that way. But the problem is, is that that's really scary to people right. because what that would actually mean is that you would need to take full responsibility for yourself oh, wow. instead of just listening to the 
proverbial mommy and daddy to tell you what to do. And what taking full self-responsibility means is that you really need to look at yourself. Right. Right. And you really need to look at those parts of yourself that you haven't been willing to look at, admit those things to yourself that you haven't been willing to admit. And many people are not willing to do that at this time because it's really scary. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, you know, you already said earlier, you know, looking at the shadow, examining the shadow, you know, dealing with your shadow. We all have to do shadow work. Uh, Well, why don't we talk about that? I mean, I can talk with a lot in a lot of different ways with you. Um, (laughs) I mean, it's rare that two people like, you know, at our level can have this conversation and obviously you and I have no shame. You know, (laughs) know, we're going to talk about this, you know, and, and, and and it's not a big issue. And true. And truthfully, at least, you know, four years ago, I would never, do a podcast like this because I was like, it's not the right place. People are going to think I'm insane. I mean, my family thinks I'm insane now. I mean, how my family thinks I'm insane. Yeah. So how many people, (laughs) you know, of whatever we want to call them, normies, sheeple, you know, people that are not as aware as us, hyper aware, I call it universal consciousness, but like Mm -hmm. we, you know, are the keepers of the sacred flame. Again, the children of the light. Yeah. So it's like, we have the hardest job because not only do we have to balance the frequency of, you know, high consciousness, love, light, wisdom, serenity, that stuff, we got to deal with the people that we still have to not judge and we still have to send love to and keep them in the highest, you know, regard. And as you know, that is the biggest game right now. And, I, and I'd like to get some strategies from you. Mm-hmm. I don't want to skip over shadow work because I want to talk about that. And we, we, we have a good 20 minutes, but how do you do it? Right? Like, like. Do you avoid, and I'm interested, obviously, from a personal level, and I know mm-hmm. that the audience is, is interested in this too, because this is the biggest question on people's minds right now, Elise. Like, if you're an advanced soul, mm-hmm. how do you deal with the people who are literally strapped to fear consciousness from the vaccine, from the mask, from the fear of dying, from the fear of everything that they were told last year, and now all the nonsense that's going on now with the lockdowns and all that stuff, like, Give us some really good strategies for people that are advanced, who are dealing with other people who are not, mm-hmm. of just existing in that, you know, that duality aspect of third dimension, attempting to stay in the fifth dimension. Yeah. So this is a great question. And this is something I feel like I have become somewhat of a pro at this year, sure. especially because my husband and I are not on the same page in many ways. Um Even though we are in certain ways, there are certain ways that we are not. And that's been a really big thing for me to navigate this year. And believe me, it's not easy sometimes because, you know, it can be tempting to judge these people, right? Like, what, like, like, how do they not get it? Like, what the hell? Like, you know, and really being like, how are these people still like where they're at. But at the same time, when we do that, we actually perpetuate the divide. Right. And I'm not saying like, you're like to punish yourself if you're doing that, because we all do that at times. Right. But at the same time, when you can catch yourself doing that, um, for me and what I was shown by my guides is that when you can look at that person and see them as already enlightened, see them as already healed, see them as already awakened, then you actually hold the space for them to step into that energy. Right. So I think that that's a really powerful thing to do. And believe me, it's not something, it's not an energy I'm able to stay in at all times, right? But um, when I can do that, it shifts the energy for myself as well. And with my husband, you know, I'm able, we're able to find, like, for instance, I told you offline, he is working for me and my business full time. And we have this very great 
creative energy together and we're both really excited. So like when we focus on that, there's so much love there and there's so much connection and I keep my energy there. And then with the other stuff, like sometimes we just don't talk about it. And- now I'm interested in finding out what the other stuff is, but let me say this. The caveat is your husband found me, so he must be a cool MF. <laughs> He is really cool. He is really <laughs> cool. Right. But, um, you know, when all of this stuff happened last year with, I call it the Coco, you know, I, it took me a couple months, but then I was able to figure out what was really happening sure. um, with him. He's still very much wrapped up in what's going on. Um, and he is wanting to get the V and I'm not, oh, and that's Lord. a big, um, Wow. point of contention with us right so wow. he is very upset that i'm not getting it and um you know that's been a point of contention right but for me like one of the things that i say is like obviously we are going to disagree on certain things all couples do but if we can have honor and love and respect for each other no matter what um then it's okay and what i realize is that as we're able to navigate this divide and come together in spite of it on an individual level, that actually has a reverberating effect on the collective. Yeah. And I think yeah. if we can look at these smaller situations that way and say, wow, the way that I navigate this will actually have like an energetic effect on the entire planet and like be able to hold a higher consciousness around that. Because believe me, I've said to my guides many times, I'm like, why am I in this situation? Like, this is fucked up. Like, like what the hell? And what I'm being shown over and over again is that part of my mission and purpose is to be able to navigate these situations, not only to help raise the consciousness of the people around me, but also to model what's possible because we are not going to move forward and create the new earth by continuing to see what is wrong with each other and what is different about each other. Right. Like, that's so amazing. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to cut you off just to add to like how amazing that is. So, I mean, I say this to people like us all the time and I, you know, have a pretty sizable private group with people like us in it, mm-hmm. which is a blessing. And by the way, my wife is one of us. So I, I'm, I'm, I, it's a miracle because my previous two wives meet up, you know, so I, yeah. I, I know where you're coming from. Yeah. And again, that's the whole separating factor, right? Like they're literally, when I say they, those who would hold us back, the dark side, the left hand path, whatever. It, it's about divide and conquer. It always has been now. So now yeah. it's like aligning people up consciously, you know, from fear versus resonance, dissonance versus resonance. That's what I always say. But uh, I know, I know your path right now. I know your battle. Um, and 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 the reality is, is the 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 greater the level of your awareness, your essential consciousness the more you're tested. It's that simple. You yeah. came here as an ascended master incarnated in this physical body, which has been, you know, many incarnations, right? And yeah. people like us have come here for this specific time because we're this close to whatever is going to happen in the universe, which, you know, some people talk about ascension. That's going to be our final point. You know, mm-hmm. one of the guys that I work with, Dr. Jerry Dehenes Riverio, you know, calls it incension, right? It's not ascension, mm-hmm. it's going within <laughs> to get out. Going within to get out. Yeah, but, I like that. You know, but in reality, what you're dealing with is just that's the necessary evolution because people like us come here to evolve and grow our soul. And when you're at the end, you got to be challenged, right? So it's the whole, you know, experience of like, how do I look at this from a place of, you know, loving eyes, which is obviously what you're having to do mm-hmm. um, and not judge and not have condescension and not have condemnation and just keep, like you said, hold space that you are the object. You are the role model in how to evolve everyone. And look, I'm the same way. Now, now the difference though with me and you is I don't actually converse anymore uh, and I don't have the situation like in my own family. Like you have an 11 year old daughter who wears a mask everywhere, right? And she's still brainwashed and conditioned by the system. But mm-hmm. um, I don't have that that you have. So you're dealing with more. But like I don't speak with family members who are in the fear consciousness zone. I just I send them love. I energetically send them love, and I keep my consciousness at the highest and best for them. But I do not lower 
You know, I don't sympathize, right? You don't want to sympathize. That's true. That's you very to, true. People, people have to learn that it's not about sympathy. It's about keeping your vibration in resonance. You know what I mean? You can keep your resonant frequency and still have love for them without sympathizing and detonating yourself. Yeah. And that's a really important thing that I like to teach people. And that also I've really started to embody myself this year is, you know, cause I am, was always super empathetic, super sure. psychic. Like I could feel what everyone was feeling. Yes. And when I was younger, it was just easier for me to like feel what they were feeling and was almost a way that I would help people. I was a school counselor for many years. And the only way I knew how to help people was to like take on what they were feeling. Wow. And now what I've learned to do is I carry a very strong energetic frequency and I show up and I allow people to calibrate to my frequency. That's so awesome. they can either calibrate or not. That's up to them. That's awesome. But I'm, I'm very aware and very intentional about the frequency that I'm holding. And that's something that I really had to step into in a big way in 2020 in order to navigate this, right? Because, you know, there's a lot of things that I am very clear on now that I won't allow to impede my boundaries, right? Like the mask, right? Like I know what that represents and I'm not going to, right. I mean, I wear it when I absolutely have to, don't right. get me wrong, but right. I only wear it when I absolutely have to. And that's just a thing where I had to be able to hold my energy and not get into a thing of like, you know, and in Philly, it was, it's getting a little better now, but it was crazy here, especially oh, over the winter. I was probably the man. only one in the entire city walking around without a mask on. Like, I kid you not. Like, it's fucking crazy here. At least you and, and I are <laughs> so, so similar people. Last night, sitting outside a restaurant, my 11-year-old daughter is sitting on the booth next to me, and she literally is wearing a mask outside in the sunlight. I said, Gabby, what are you doing? What do you mean, Dad? I'm just sitting here. Take off your mask. Dad, it's, it's safer. Gabby, take off your mask. You're in the bright sunlight. You're not a slave. Take off yeah. your mask. I mean, I literally say that. Now, my other 13-year-old daughter is much more empowered and sovereign. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Whatever. But we're all different and we're all making choices based on either resonance or dissonance. Again, fear, consciousness, or love, right? And we can't have judge for her. But I will say to her in places like that, like, look, you're not a slave. You're not in fear of anything right now other than your consciousness. So take off the mask. You're not, there was no one around her, by the way, right? So she yeah. had an argument. Right. Yeah, but if I wear my mask around people that are afraid, at least I'd keep them from getting the COVID. The cocoa, by the way, I'm going to start using that. <laughs> um, I have all sorts of names for it. Um, I'm going to give you another 15 minutes because you're so amazing. I don't care. I'm going to show up late to my meeting. Um, I want to talk, <laughs> but I, I, I want to talk, and we'll do another one. I want to talk and we'll do a live stream actually, because I want to have people come on uh, who yeah, can ask love questions that. about, yeah, about healing trauma and stuff like that. And, uh, and I'm going to bring you in my private group. That's all stuff we'll talk about, but um, let's talk a little bit about shadow work and then we'll finish with um, strategies to cope and get out. Right. Ascension, ascent, ascension, ascension, whatever. But uh, how do you right now recommend people who are heavily traumatized to start confronting the idea that they are, and then obviously to seek help, because you already said, you know, healing your trauma, integrating your trauma is step one. And it's really yeah. step, step, it's A to Z. Mm -hmm. But like, how do you get people to confront it, admit it, accept it, allow it, and then integrate it? So usually what happens, and you know, also like we have to be okay with the fact that there might be people who are never willing to, to admit it and that's okay, right? And what happens is when we're wanting more, the universe will automatically meet you and show you what is standing in the way of you having more. Beautiful. So that's what happens. Or there'll be people who are like, I have really bad anxiety. Um, I have racing thoughts. I feel miserable or that kind of thing. So I think it can show up in that way too. So that's the number one way that you know that there's something to be cleared, right? And we all have it. Right. It's not like it's not like there's anybody who's walking around being like, oh, I have no trauma. I'm totally healed. Like we would not be on the this planet if that was the case. So um, that's usually the first step. So I would say for this particular thing, for healing your trauma, you can't do it on your own. 
Right. Right. And I see a lot of people make that mistake where they're, you know, cause I off, I do offer free tools. I have an amazing, amazing free breath work session, all this stuff. And I see people who are like, okay, well, I'm just going to do this on my own. Right. And yes, that is helpful. But if you are going to make any real progress, you need to work with somebody and you need to invest time, money, and energy into doing this, right? Because you need to make a commitment to it because it's not something that can happen overnight. I've learned how to help people make it happen efficiently and somewhat quickly, like within a month. But it does take commitment and dedication and willingness Willingness is the most important thing to really go there and really do the work. So, um, yeah, it's it's something that I feel like can be streamlined. And I have created a toolkit that will help you really streamline it. But you just have to be willing to look at certain things and admit certain things to yourself that you might not be willing to admit. And you have to be able to look at what you're suppressing. And sometimes you can't always see that without somebody showing you and without you starting to really do that deep dive into your subconscious and see what's really there. Because a lot of times, like for me, one of the big things that I realized when I left my full-time job was that I actually had so much anger that I had in the past submitted to doing something that I actually didn't want to do because society told me that that was safe or that's how I would have a good life or that I had to give up who I really am in order to survive. And there's a lot of anger around that. So like there's things like that that I never would have really known I was holding until I went down this path, until I quit my job and all of this stuff came up, right? So like it's like this process of, looking at that thing that you're wanting and then taking the steps to get there and seeing all the stuff that comes up to be cleared in the process. Elise, beautiful. I mean, let me just echo. So Monday when we got back from Cabo, we're at San Diego airport. Everything's great. No issues. Had my fake PCR test. So does my wife. So uh, I got back to the airport. Everything's great. We go to the bus, you know, we, we drive now and I just park in a parking garage and then we get the bus to the parking garage and we drive back. Anyway, get off, we, we're on the parking garage or off the bus, get off. And literally I look at my wife. I'm like, where's my backpack? And she goes, what, what you carrying it? I was like, I was carrying it. Oh like, you know, we got to, we got to check out, you know, first we got to get the car. It's a valet and, you know, I'm signing for it. And the people at valet are taking forever. And my wife's like, <laughs> You know, just just give me the keys. I'll go. I'll go find it. You know, left back there because I mean everything is in my laptop. I mean in my backpack. But I swear to you, Elise, it was I triggered trauma from my youth. She finds it. It was just sitting oh there, God. and the cops were walking up, and they were telling her they're like, if you would not have got here within one minute, we would have taken that thing. Probably bomb squad looked at it. You know, you'd have never got it. Right? Picked it up. She came back in the car. And for the next 10 minutes, I literally was able to look at my life on repeat from a neutral observer observer standpoint, thinking like, how did I just, what just happened? Yeah. I was not in control of who I am as a being. I was completely unconscious. I was that six-year-old boy who watched his dad have temper tantrums. And I became that. Everything that you said is like, it's a constant game to stay in balance. And to, even when you're cleared for the most part, and I feel pretty much that I am, and I know I'm always holding residual, there's always stuff in there that trigger and come out. Of course. It's just how do you work with it when it does, right? right. And if right. you're, because most people are living their life in that reactionary state that you described, Seriously. right? But when it comes up, if you're able to like identify it and use the tools that you have to move through it, that's what it's about. Because it's not about right. like it never happening. Like, of course, it's going to happen. Exactly. It's, I always joke, I'm like, you're never like, oh, healed my relationship with my mom, like all done, you know, like that never happens. It's just, how do you work with the energy when it comes up? And how do you use the tools that you have to move through it quickly and consciously? Exactly. So that's super important. Yeah. And and that's, and, I, and, I, and again, you know, I wish I was that big of a master that I could have done it right away because my wife had to question me and laugh at me. And she goes, you're a <laughs> child. I mean, my wife got mad, you know, because I was acting like a fool. Yeah. But then how, you know, what in the hell? Anyway, I, 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 I use my tools. And I, and I, and I got out of it, you know, not as fast as I would have liked, 
right? But the, but the bottom line is, is that we all have to have those tools. But let's just say in the last couple of minutes here, your prediction on where we're going in the next three to five years, I already heard you say the magic words, golden age. Obviously, you're in the same camp as me. But like, what do you think? How is this all going to shake out over the next two to five to 10 years? So I think there's going to be first, there's going to I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. I definitely think there's going to be a lot more of dismantling of systems and structures, false information and fear tactics going around. I definitely there's think there's going to be some kind of like disclosure around like UFOs and all that stuff, which is a whole nother topic. Yep. Um, but at the same time, I also tr- do truly feel that the light workers, that people like us are going to find it easier and easier and easier to navigate because we're just going to start to get really good at it. Right. Like right. I feel like even for me, like, especially in 2021, 2019, Elise would have like ran away crying um 2021 Elise is like fuck it like whatever and I'm just like dealing with it and doing it and there's people that don't like me anymore there's people that think I'm crazy um and there's people that love me anyway you know what I mean so it's just I think it's going to get easier to navigate because we're going to get used to it but I also think we're going to see a lot of big shifts happening. And I also feel like there's going to be another big wave of people waking up because I feel like there's going to be people who, you know, once there's more crazier things happening, people are going to start to be like, what the fuck is going on here? And, you know, start to really question and, and wake up in a deeper way. Beautiful. Um, well, you know, my opinion, right. But I've worked with, I mean, my business partner creates MRNA viruses, right? So, I mean, I know this like from a science level better than most people and there will mm-hmm. be a mass die off. There's going to be a mass die off. There's yeah. going to be massive autoimmune disorder that to me, and this is my prediction. And then I'll let you go. I'll let you pre- uh, tell people where they can work with you. But my prediction is the, the die off and the autoimmune disorders that will come from this nonsense will be the awakening. That was- yeah, I, I saw that too. That's what the guide showed me. I was actually, exactly. when I was driving up to the woods um, a couple months ago, wow. that's what I was shown. So that's exactly I completely what I, agree that's, with you. I, I feel that too, a hundred percent. Like that is the final nail in the coffin for the people that just have failed, you know, for whatever reason to to awake, where they will be like, wow, they're not actually at our, they're not our friends. They, they don't have our best interests at heart. You know what's so funny that I always say, like, if the government and big pharma had our best interests at heart, this world would be a very different place. Totally. Like, just look at what, like, what is happening on the planet, regardless of, like, the right. stuff that's recently been happening. Exactly. But just looking at right. the world in general and how it operates, if the, like, there are plenty of answers and resources out there for everybody in this world to have what they need. And the fact that they don't show should be answer enough that these people don't have our best interests at heart. Right. So I, I feel I, like that's very obvious. And that's something I say all the time. But like I said before, people don't want to believe it and people will see what they want to see. Well, at least that, okay. To that point, we could talk all day and I know I have to go. <laughs> um, and, and again, I'm so privileged that you came on the show because it's been phenomenal, but um, they're under mind control. That's yeah. literally what is happening. They are under 100%. a hundred percent. It's very, very real, like MK Ultra serious mind control. Yes, and people exactly don't even realize it. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what it is. I mean, but you know, again, you know, in the experts that you and I are in our, in our other fields and stuff like that, I mean, all you have to do is look at the environment, the plastics, the blue light, the spraying of the skies. The endocrine disruptors in the in the in the water supply, the birth control in the water supply. I mean, they have been doing this game since they first invented vaccines when the Rockefellers did back in night in 1920. Mm-hmm. I always tell people, no, vaccines have never been the answer. They were another big pharma scam to make money and brainwash people that they needed to give kids shots. It's all nonsense. God source confers immunity at birth. There, it's perfection. Mm-hmm. There is no vaccine. Anyway, I will let you go. How can people? 
And I will have you back on, of course, but how can people work with you, connect with you? What is the best way for them to do that? So either Instagram is, I'm just Elise underscore breathes or um, my website. You can get in touch with me there, elisebreathes.com. And then also my Facebook group is really fun. Um, I do weekly energy forecasts in there. And I also have a group of experts that come in and share their wisdom. And that's called Breathe to Succeed. And you can find me there on Facebook. Amazing. Elise, you are amazing. And I truly appreciate you coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. So guys, remember, always support the amazing individuals. One of the best clearly has ever come on my podcast today, Elise Breeze. Go to her website, elisebreeze.com. Find her on IG. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you very soon. Peace.